Give a Bible this morning. If you turn with me to John chapter 1. John chapter 1. party to which his mother consented, provided that he asked his little friend Tommy. The boys had had trouble, but rather than not have the party, Willie promised his mother to invite Tommy. Well, on the evening of the party, when all the small guests had arrived, except Tommy, the mother became suspicious and decided to talk with her son. Willie, she said, did you invite Tommy to your party tonight? Yes, mother. And did he say he would not come? No, explained Willie. I invited him all right, but I dared him to come. <laughs> when offered in the right spirit, there is something about receiving an invitation that makes us feel special and wanted and accepted. An invitation is a powerful way to reach out to others. A man invites a woman out for a date. A business person invites a client out for lunch. A friend invites another friend for coffee. A family invites another family over for dinner. An invitation can make a difference. An invitation can change a destiny. An invitation is something that we must deliver if people are ever going to know they belong at North Nixon. Today we continue our series called Belong, and we are going to see very clearly from, the, from God's Word the value of an invitation. So if you would, stand with me as we read God's Word this morning in John chapter 1, beginning in verse 35. John writes, Again, the next day, John was standing with two of his disciples, and he looked at Jesus as he walked and said, Behold, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. And Jesus turned and saw them following and said to them, What do you seek? And they said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come, and you will see. And so they came and saw where he was staying, and they stayed with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He found first his own brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which translated means Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. And Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon the son of John. You shall, you shall be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. The next day, he purposed to go into Galilee and found Philip. And Jesus said to him, follow me. And now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. And Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him of whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said to him, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Father, speak to our hearts. Help us to see today the value of an invitation. In Jesus' name, amen. First, we see the value of an invitation by the example. In the verses I just read, we discover that John the Baptist is standing with his disciples, and he sees Jesus coming his way. And John the Baptist says to his disciples, Behold the Lamb of God. In other words, the one chosen by God to die for the sin of the world. And the Bible says as soon as 
These two disciples hear this announcement by John the Baptist. They begin to follow Jesus. Jesus turns around and he sees them following him. And he says to them in verse 38, what do you seek? And they said to him, Rabbi, where are you staying? And verse 39 says, he said to them, come and see. And so they came and saw where he was staying, and they stayed with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. Come and see, Jesus says to these two men. Jesus offers these two men an invitation, an invitation to come and be with him. Now, this isn't the only time we see Jesus offering an invitation. I want you to hold your place here in John. And I want you to go back to Luke, Luke 19, Luke 19. Here in Luke 19, we find the story about a chief tax collector named Zacchaeus. Now, this man was loaded with money. But he was relationally bankrupt. Zacchaeus had no friends. Nobody from the local synagogue was inviting him to worship with them. But one day, Zacchaeus, he gets word that Jesus is coming through Jericho. And it's apparent from Zacchaeus' response that he has heard about Jesus because he wants to see him. However, Zacchaeus is short in stature, and he's unable to see Jesus because the crowd is blocking his view. Well, if you know the story, then you know that Zacchaeus runs ahead. He climbs up in a sycamore tree so he can see Jesus. He wants to catch a glimpse of Jesus. The Bible says in Luke 19:5, when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and he said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for today I must stay at your house. Zacchaeus wanted to catch a glimpse of Jesus. But Jesus catches a glimpse of Zacchaeus. And he offers him an invitation. Hurry and come down for today I must stay at your house. An invitation to come and be with him. The way that Jesus let John the Baptist disciples and Zacchaeus know that they belong with him was by offering them an invitation. You see, the value of an invitation is seen in the fact that Jesus offered them to others. If an invitation wasn't important, if it truly wasn't important in letting people know they belong, Jesus would not have ever offered them, but he did. Jesus offered invitations, and so should we. One way that we let our family and friends and neighbors and co-workers and classmates know that they belong at North Nixa is by offering them an invitation to come. You know, I think so often we wrongly believe if we build it, they will come. That's kind of the mindset that we have as God's people. If we build a building, then the community will naturally just come to it. The reality is not if we build it, they will come. The reality is if we invite them, they will come. Research confirms this. A few years ago, LifeWay Research conducted a survey of 15,000 adults for the North American Mission Board to try to determine which of 13 approaches is the best received when a church wants to be heard. And the research showed the best received means of seeing new people walk into one's church is a personal invitation. 67% of Americans say a personal invitation from a family member would be very or somewhat effective in getting them to visit a church. 63% of Americans say a personal invitation from a friend or a neighbor would be very or somewhat effective in getting them to visit a church. 63% of Americans are very or somewhat willing to receive information about a local congregation or faith community from a family member. And finally, 56% of Americans are very or somewhat willing to receive information from a local congregation or faith community from a friend or a neighbor. 
You know, often the reason others don't come to North Nixa, and, and not just North Nixa, but since we are North Nixa, we're going to talk about North Nixa. But so often the reason others don't come to North Nixa is not because they are unwilling to come. They are simply waiting for an invitation to come. See, the reality is that there are many people in our community and sphere of influence who wonder if they belong at North Nixon because they have never been invited. Think about your own life. If something's going on, if something is happening and you don't receive an invitation, then what do you think? Well, apparently I don't belong. Because had I belonged, then they would have invited me to come. And there are a lot of people in our community, in our sphere of influence, they simply don't think they belong here because they've never been invited here. They're willing. They're just waiting. Jesus, he is our example to follow. Jesus offered an invitation, and we must offer an invitation. Uh, Andrew, he followed Jesus' example. Look again at what we read in John chapter 1, beginning of verse 40. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. What did he do? He found first his own brother Simon, and he said to him, We have found the Messiah. And what's the Bible say? He brought him to Jesus. Andrew offers his brother an invitation. You've got to come. We found the Messiah. You've got to come and you've got to see for yourself. Philip, he followed Jesus' as example. In John 1 43, we find Jesus inviting Philip to follow him. And, and what's the next thing that Philip does? Philip offers an invitation to Nathaniel. John 1, look again there, verse 44. says, Now Philip was from Bethsaida of the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael, and he said to him, We have found him of whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael said to him, Can any good thing come out of, Na of, of Nazareth? And Philip said, Come and see. Jesus invites Andrew. Andrew invites Simon. Jesus invites Philip. Philip invites Nathaniel. Jesus invites Travis. And Travis invites... The invitation can't end with us. It can't end with us. Invitations work. They work. The value of, it, of an invitation is seen by the example of Jesus and others in the Bible. We see them over and over and over again. Now, I'm not going to have you raise your hand. But I would say that some people sitting in this room today, you are here because you were, were invited. Not all of you. But I would say some of you here, you're sitting here today because somebody said, come to church with me. Come to North Nixon with me. It works. The value of an invitation is seen in the example of Jesus. Again, if they didn't work, then Jesus would have, he would have given them. But Jesus gave invitations. His followers gave invitations. And we must also give an invitation. Second, we see the value of an invitation by the excitement. When someone offers an invitation... It is usually done with excitement. And when a couple sends out wedding invitations, they are excited about it. When someone sends out an invitation for a baby shower, they are excited about it. When someone sends an invitation for a surprise birthday party, they are excited about it. Now, the person who it's for may not be excited about it, but the person who's throwing the party, they're excited about it, right? Right? Uh, when a restaurant owner sends out an invitation to be part of a, a soft opening, they are excited about it. The value of an invitation is seen by the excitement. You know, if the person inviting me to something is not excited about it, guess what? 
then I'm probably not going to see much value in their invitation. It's like, why don't you come with me? <laughs> okay. Right? But I mean, they're like, I want you to come with me. Then you're going to be like, okay. You know, this person's pretty excited about what they're inviting me to. Maybe there's some value in this. I want you to look again at John chapter 1. <laughs> Verse 41, John says that he, that is Andrew, found first his own brother Simon, and he said to him, we have found the Messiah, and he brought him to Jesus. I think that when Andrew said to Simon, we have found the Messiah, he didn't say it like this. We have found the Messiah. Any idea how he probably said it? We have found the Messiah! He was excited to announce to his brother that they had found the Messiah. He did it with excitement. Listen, the Jews, they've been waiting for the promised Messiah to come for years. And so I don't think Andrew could hardly contain himself when he invited his brother. Come and see. Look with me at John 1, 45. Philip, he found Nathaniel and he said to him, We have found him of whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote. So, okay, here's, here's a guy. They've been hearing for years. Again, they've been reading and hearing the law. And the prophets talk about this Jesus of Nazareth. The son of Joseph. And I, I think when Philip found Nathaniel, he was excited to tell him about Jesus. When he says to Nathaniel, come and see, I think it was an invitation that was given with excitement. Now, there's one more place I want you to turn to. John chapter 4. So just a few chapters over, if you would. Look at John chapter 4. Here in John chapter 4, we find Jesus... Meeting up with a woman at the local well in the city of Sychar. <laughs> Through the course of her conversation with Jesus, we discover this woman has had five husbands. And the man that she's currently living with isn't her husband. Now, this is likely the reason this woman is drawing water all by herself instead of drawing water with others, as was the custom. She didn't have any friends. Nobody wanted to be around this woman. Certainly the other women didn't want to be around her. Perhaps she had taken her man. Who knows? All we know is this woman was all by herself coming to the well, which again was not the custom. This woman had a reputation. She didn't have any friends. This woman was looking for love in all the wrong places. She was trying to fill a void in her life that only Jesus could fill. And so as she talked with Jesus, Jesus offers her an invitation to drink water from a well that would satisfy her deepest thirst, which was an inward thirst. He also reveals to her that, that he's the Messiah. And I want you to see what happens as recorded in John chapter 4, verse 28. Look what it says. So Jesus has offered her this living water. He's, he said, I am the Messiah. I'm the one you've heard about. The Bible says, so the woman left her water pot, went into the city, and said to them, come see a man who told me all the things I've done. This is not the Christ, is it? They went out to the city and were coming to them. This woman, she was so excited, she forgot to take her water pot back with her to town. She couldn't wait to go and tell everyone about this man she had, she had met who, who told her all the things that she had done, yet she didn't feel any condemnation at all. The invitation to come back with her to that well, I want to tell you, it was done with excitement. Had any of the aforementioned, Andrew, Philip, or this woman at the well, offered an invitation without any excitement, I'm not sure any of them, any of them at all, would have had the response they did. Listen, we see the value of an invitation by the excitement. We should be excited 
to offer an invitation to our family, our friends, our neighbors, our classmates, our co-workers to come to North Nixa. Not because of any program that we have, but because of the Jesus we have. We have a Jesus of unconditional love. We have a Jesus of unlimited grace and mercy. We have a Jesus of unending forgiveness. We have a Jesus of unlimited supply of living water that can quench the thirst of the driest soul. That is something to be excited about, church. Amen. And this community needs Jesus Christ. And we are the people who can invite this community to come to know him. See, the reason we should be excited about offering an invitation to people to come to North Nixa is because those who don't know Jesus will have an opportunity to come to know Jesus, and those who do know Jesus will have an opportunity to grow closer to Jesus. And that's something to be excited about. There are a lot of great organizations in this community. And I want to tell you something, it is only the church that have something to offer this community that will change their lives here, now, and forever. And we ought to be excited to give people an opportunity to come to know Jesus Christ, an opportunity to grow closer to Jesus Christ through this community of faith. We just ask this in a church. If we're not excited when inviting people to come to this church, then why do we think anyone would ever be interested in coming to this church? Just a question for us to ponder. I mean, if we're not excited about this church, May I, just, may I just tell you that a lost and dying world, they for sure are not going to be excited about North Nixon Baptist. They don't know anything about this church. They don't know anything about our Christ. We know about our Christ. We know about this church. We ought to be excited about our Christ, first and foremost and always. But listen, he created the church to be an expression of his love, grace, mercy, forgiveness in this community. And that again is something to be excited about. Amen. One of the things I love is to hear my children get excited about being a part of coming to church and being with their friends and God's people. My, my kids will actually say to me, are we having second church today? <laughs> yeah. Second church being Sunday evening. They're excited about it. They want to come back. And all that we would have, that type of excitement to get together with God's people and, and most of all to invite other people to get together with God's people. Excitement. And I'm not, just, I'm not talking about something you, you have to work up. I'm not talking about some facade. I'm not talking about saying, well, pastor says I ought to be excited, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to be excited about this. <laughs> no, it's just something within you that you can't within you. And I want to tell you, that's how I feel about this church. That's how I feel about you. You are my brothers and sisters in Christ, and I love being with you. I know that we would be excited to tell our community and invite our community to come. Because again, many of them, they don't think they belong here. You know what? There's a, there's a perception now, people think, well, that's a, that's a club of people. You have to have, apparently, you have to be invited to come. And no one's ever invited me to come, so I guess I'm not welcome. It's the farthest thing from the truth. As we talked about last week, every single person in this community is welcome. But how do they know that they're welcome? We have to invite them. Finally. So we see the value of an invitation by the example. We see the value of an invitation by the excitement. Finally, we see the value of an invitation by the emergency. When an invitation is given with urgency, 
It shows its importance. After Jesus gives an invitation to the woman at the well, he immediately gives an invitation to his disciples. Look with me at John chapter 4, once again. Verse 35. <coughs> Do you not say there are yet four months and then comes the harvest? Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields. They are white for harvest. The disciples obviously didn't have a sense of urgency when it came to bringing in the harvest. They thought they had four months to bring people to Jesus, but Jesus invites them to see otherwise. Jesus says, behold, in other words, see, see, open up your eyes and see. That's what he's saying to them. I say to you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields that they are white for harvest. Jesus, he is saying it's imperative that you see that there are people all around you who are ready for you to bring to me. There's an invitation of emergency. Jesus is saying, there's no time to waste. It's harvest time. There needs to be an urgency by us when it comes to inviting people to come to the Lord next time. See, I believe Jesus Christ will say to us today what he said to his, his disciples that day. It's imperative that we open up our eyes to see that there are people all around us who are ready to be brought to Jesus. We just need to invite them to hear the gospel. And I want to tell you, this is a great place to invite them to hear the gospel. I just want to say one last thing before we bring this to a conclusion. Look again there at John chapter 4. So remember, this woman, she comes in contact with Jesus. She's excited. I mean, she's excited about Jesus. She goes back into town, tells the people in town, you've got to come back. They come back with her. Do you know who was in that town already? Do you know who had gone into town, who had left Jesus at the well and gone into town? The disciples. Nobody followed the disciples back to Jesus. But they followed a woman who was excited to go into town and tell them, come and see this one. Could it be the Christ? Why did the disciples have that type of excitement when they went into town where they would say, hey, you've got to come and see Jesus, the one that you have been waiting for. I'm afraid sometimes we, we lose our excitement. You remember what it was like when you first started following Jesus, how excited you were to tell people about Jesus. Come, you gotta come, you gotta, you gotta experience. But listen, sometimes the, the longer we walk with Jesus, the less excited we become when it should be just the opposite. Because the more we follow Jesus, the more we ought to know about him, and the more excited we ought to be. But those disciples, they had lost their passion and excitement. And yet. Somebody from North Nixon Baptist, somebody who gets saved, what do they do? They go out in the community and they start saying, you've got to come, you've got to come, you've got to come. Oh, that all of us, whether we follow Jesus one day or whether we have followed Jesus for 25 years, may we all have a passion to say, you've got to come and see. Amen. It's urgent. Because the, the fields are they're wide in the harvest and we don't know when Jesus is coming back. He can come back at this very moment and a world could, could be separated from him for all eternity. So it's time to be urgent about the invitation to get people here to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. So, the value of an invitation. It's seen by the example, the excitement, the emergency. <laughs> When it comes to inviting people to North Nixon, we need to be like the young man in this video. Take a look.
Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. If you've never done that, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to lead you in just a simple prayer. There's nothing magical about this prayer. But if it expresses the attitude of your heart, it helps you to formulate what's in your heart. Would you just say this prayer right where you're at? There's nobody else looking. It's you and God. Jesus I believe that you came to this earth and that you died on the cross for my sin. I believe that you were placed in a tomb, but three days later you rose to life. And today I confess you, Jesus, as the only one who can save me from my sin and give me eternal life. Thank you, Jesus, for shedding your blood so that I could be forgiven of my sin. I place my faith and trust in you alone. Every head down, every eye closed, nobody looking around. If you're here today and you just said that prayer for the very first time, there's nobody looking. It's just me and you and the Lord. Would you just slip up your hand right now? Anybody here? Thank you. You can put your hand down. Thank you. 
Anybody else who would say, I just, I just prayed that prayer? Anybody else? I believe the Bible teaches next steps. See, our, our walk with Jesus, it's, it's, a, it's a walk of faith. It's one step after another. And I believe that Jesus is always calling us to take another step, another step. And I don't know what that step is for you today, but I believe the Holy Spirit's at work. I believe he's showing you what step. For those of you who prayed and asked Jesus Christ for your Savior and Lord, and I know this is a big step, but God will give you the strength to take this big step. I want to invite you in just a few moments just to walk this aisle. You say, man, that's going to, that's going to be hard to do. It will be. But I want to say, here's what's going to happen. You're going to confess before this church that you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. And you know what's going to happen? This church is going to celebrate with you. That's what the angels are doing right now in heaven. They're celebrating because of the decision. You passed from death to life. And that's something to celebrate. And we just want to celebrate with you. And so if you'd just be so courageous just to walk this aisle, just come on down, just come on down. In just a few moments, we're going to sing. We're going to sing a hymn of invitation. Any decision that you need to make, I want to invite you to come. Jesus, thank you. Thank you that you came and you gave your life for us. Thank you that you provided a way for us to be forgiven of our sin. I thank you, Father, for the one who's come today because they place their faith and trust in you as their Savior and their Lord. And Father, I pray if there's anyone else here today who needs to take this step, I pray that they would take it today. May today be their day of salvation. Other decisions that need to be made. Holy Spirit, do the work that only you can do. And we'll give you glory and praise for it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Stand as we sing. Right now, you come.
This is Mark McCartney. Got that right, right? Mm -hmm. First Sunday was last Sunday, correct? Mm -hmm. And uh, a few moments ago, when I uh, offered the opportunity to pray to receive Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, Mark prayed, trusted in Jesus Christ as Savior, and uh, he's come today because he wants all of you to know of the decision that he's made to trust in Jesus Christ as his Savior and Lord. He's going to follow the Lord and, and believers' baptism in the coming coming week. So we'll get that set up. But uh, man, God is so good, isn't He? So Mark, we're going to have you go back there, and, and everybody's going to want to just give you a high five, this mama hug, something to tell you. Welcome to the family of God. We are so excited. And as He makes His way out there, just uh, give the Lord a hand and Him a hand as He goes. All right. Praise the name of Jesus. 